So old Trump wants to declare the uh, the Mexican drug cartels to be terrorist organizations. Uh, now, this is something that I find kind of funny because, uh, you know, we're getting to the point to where everything is being declared a terrorist organization, which uh, is not shocking. Um, you know, there were a lot of people who warned after 9-11 that, hey, you know, all this stuff that we're creating to, to deal with these supposed terrorists, you know, we should worry about that because, you know, sure, uh, we all agree that, uh, you know, 9-11 is bad, right? It's like the Holocaust. Everyone agrees the Holocaust is bad. Um but uh, you know you should be careful on on trying to to use that to justify you know anything and everything uh, because while we all want to you know take down Al Qaeda or whatever we should be worried that in the future uh, all of this stuff could be applied you know in a, um, bro more broad and broader and broader situations because now uh, you know Donald Trump wants to take sort of the entire mechanism the entire machine of the war on terror that's been you know built up in the Middle East and now transplant it here to you know fight the drug war and that's something that really should uh, frighten and concern all Americans uh, because this is something that you know hey he can do out of executive power he can just sort of sign a piece of paper and say okay now we declare the, the cartels to be terrorists well now you know by if we're saying you know that the cartels are terrorists well then obviously that means we have a huge domestic terror problem and that there's all these terrorists everywhere just like there are all these terrorists in Afghanistan and Iraq and and you see what the US is able to do over there under the pretense of fighting terrorism uh, you know bombing civilians uh, no-knock raids on pretty much anybody and everybody, uh, you know, uh, holding people uh, guilty until proven innocent, uh, you know, killing uh, lots of people just because – not because they're necessarily evil or because, you know, the soldiers are just all terrible bad guys, uh, but because they have this mandate uh, to try and uh, enforce – an impossibly, you know, tyrannical decree that, uh, you know, we, we must root out all of these potential baddies, anyone who could, uh, you know, potentially uh, be uh, someone who is affiliated with a Mexican drug cartel or so anyone who's potentially affiliated with the Taliban or Al Qaeda or one of these other groups that, uh, you know, we're not that we don't like today, but we're funding yesterday. I mean, really, this would be the kind of, uh, you know, regime that, uh, you know, we haven't seen in America, uh, the kind of relationship between the people and the government that hasn't existed since Reconstruction. You know, that's really the uh, uh, the closest parallel that I can think of, and, you know, and that's because Reconstruction was, you know, the, uh, the Union military occupation of the South, which lasted for, you know, multiple decades, I think. And uh, you know, don't don't fool yourself. If you if the uh, cartels are terrorist organizations, well, then you're going to end up with a military occupation of much of the United States, uh, because uh, Trump will be turning the U.S. military on uh, you know the U.S. homeland uh, to uh, uh, to root out uh, these horrible, awful, no good terrorists. Now I know what everybody's going to be saying. Oh, posse comitatus, posse comitatus. You know, you're, you can't use uh, can't use the military to enforce domestic you know domestic laws. But I have to tell you, um, that's going to go away pretty quick. Obviously, posse comitatus is. is um, not something that is enshrined in our constitution, you know, and is not the the most sacrosanct, uh, you know, legal principle in the world. Obviously, uh, you know, posse comitatus uh, was suspended uh, during uh, the uh, the war between the states. Uh, you know, the U.S. military has been used, um, uh, you know, on the U.S. Um, uh, homeland. Uh, and targeting its own people uh, before, and there's no reason to think that it won't be again if we get to this point, because right now they're not talking about that. What they're talking about is sending troops into Mexico. They're saying, oh, we're, we're going to invade Mexico and tear up these cartels and come home. It's like, well, the, the cartels aren't just in Mexico. The cartels operate in Mexico to funnel drugs into the U.S., so their market is in America. That's where the cartels are, are you know – running their business so obviously if you're sending troops into mexico to fight the cartels when well, the, the next obvious step is to you know have the troops that are already in america fight the cartels here so obviously they won't start with that but there's no reason uh, to think that you know once we get down that road uh, it's a very it's a you know it's it's not a a, a huge um bridge to cross uh from 
you know, the, the Rio Grande. I mean, literally and figuratively. Uh, if you've got drone strikes and things like Trump is talking about, and uh, and SWAT, well, not SWAT raids, worse than SWAT raids, you know, special operations raids um, going on inside Mexico, you know, America's next door neighbor. Well, then <laughs> uh, why wouldn't, you know, if that's going on in Juarez, why wouldn't it be going on in El Paso? Uh, just because of some, uh, you know, some uh, line in the sand or because of a river uh, that the, the military is not allowed to operate against? No, that's going to go away pretty quick. And the people targeted by these raids and by these drone strikes, are they going to be uh, people who are uh, necessarily convicted in a court of law beforehand? Uh, no, of course not, uh, because you know this is essentially a police action. Uh, they're going in to try and you know, enforce law, and they're targeting these people because they're terrorists, because they're dangerous. And so what you're going to have is you're going to have you know Americans being slaughtered uh, without trial. Uh, you know, uh, because they are supposedly, uh, according to the government, uh, you know, agents of the uh, the Mexican cartels. Um, and of course, you know, you're going to have uh, any illegals also would be caught up in that too, and you know, whoever else. And for those who are, you know, maybe a little more, a uh, little more trusting, and uh, I guess blue pilled uh, when it comes to uh, to the U.S. government, uh, you might be saying, "Oh, come on, that's crazy! The U.S. government would never just kill its own people." Well, first of all, they already do regularly in SWAT raids, and and I mean, red flag raids are the best example to where they come in and try and take somebody's gun in the middle of the night, and a guy gets up and he's like, "Oh, somebody's breaking into my house," and he grabs his gun, and they go like, "Oh, he has a gun," and kill him. Uh, that's that's murder. That's an assassination. That's you know they know exactly what they're doing. Um, so, and that guy you know didn't stand a trial. There was no due process or anything like that. There was no probable cause. Uh, and and those things already happen. And that's with the police, let alone the military. The, mil the you know the military is always going to have um, uh, less stringent standards when it comes to their handling of civilians uh, than the police do. And you know with uh, with the uh, another good example. Uh, of uh, you know the U.S. government killing American citizens you know without putting them on trial or anything like that was uh, uh, was Obama's uh, hit list that he used to operate back when uh, you know I'm sure Trump has continued it of just people that the U.S. is you know looking to assassinate whenever they find them all they kill them they send a drone and kill them uh, and that includes U.S. citizens uh, you know uh, a lot of people didn't care at the time because you know this particular guy was uh, a relative of a terrorist but uh, the son of Anwar al awlaki and I believe. Uh, and who you know is an American citizen because Anwar al-Awlaki was an American. Um, uh, he was you know suspected of following in his father's footsteps and being a terrorist, and he was droned. Uh, not on U.S. soil, but in Yemen. But he was a U.S. citizen, and uh, you know U.S. citizens are it's generally understood are entitled to due process, um, and you know kind of have to be convicted of a crime uh, if they are to be executed. And it's not like this uh, this Alaki kid was in a war zone. First of all, I believe he was only 16, so he was a minor. Um, although I'd have to f fact check that, so I, that might not be true. But anyway, he was, he was eating at a cafe in Yemen, and this was before the Yemeni civil war. Uh, so he was not, you know, an active participant in a in an armed conflict who happened to be killed in a battle or something like that. No, he was specifically hunted down and killed a, a U.S. citizen. And so if you're suspected like he was, you know, if you're suspected of being a part of a terrorist organization, um, let's say you happen to know somebody uh, who is working for a cartel and you might not necessarily know that, um, you know, you may very well find yourself targeted as someone who is a suspected terrorist and uh, get yourself droned. And so please don't think any of this is crazy because all the precedent is there. Uh, the pieces are in place. You know, the pu you know, it's not it's not that complicated of a puzzle. There's only a few pieces to put together, but if you're willing to put in, uh, you know, the time and just to think it out, uh, it's pretty clear uh, what picture uh, these pieces create. Trump right now is flirting with leading the U.S. down a road to a uh, complete loss of civil liberty. Uh, you know, to uh, to really, uh, you know, the end of freedom as we know it, uh, at least for now. And, and you know, again, this has happened before. You know, Reconstruction uh, was not a nice time. Uh, if you happen to live in the South, and people can go, oh, blah, you know, blah, the uh, Confederates bad. It's like, well, you know, if you happen to live in the South. After the Civil War, that doesn't necessarily mean that you were a slave owner or something like that. Uh, you know, there were a very small percentage of the population that were slave owners. Reconstruction did not target just slave owners; it targeted everybody because it was a military occupation. It was focused on a region, okay? And uh, that's not something that is consistent with freedom, okay? It's the exact opposite. Uh, it's your life being micromanaged and um, and lorded over uh, by uh, the military. 
It's the way people have to live in countries like Afghanistan and Iraq. Um, it, it's, you know, uh, it's horrible. And there were so many smart and prescient people who warned uh, at the start of the terror war that this, that this terrible Leviathan machine uh, that is being built in response to 9-11, uh, that this, this whole war on terror um, uh, mechanism uh, could very easily be turned around and, and uh, used against us, uh, against we, the American people. And of course, everyone at the time said, "Oh, that's crazy! This is only being used on terrorists in the Middle East. How could you? How could you ever say that the terror war could come home? You know, I mean, we're we're all you know. There would have to be a bunch of terrorists here to do that. Well, you know, by declaring the car, the drug cartels, and by extension, just pretty much any drug dealer, because you know, the drug cartels are sort of the um, you know, they're they're like the uh, the middleman distribution networks when it comes to distributing drugs. So pretty much anyone involved in the drug trade is going to be considered a terrorist." Uh, and uh, so, therefore, they will be, you know, subject to uh, all of the these uh, these terror war principles. And just like in, you know, uh, countries in the Middle East, where the the people who even count by the U.S. definition as terrorists are a pretty small number of people, but they get a lot of people caught up uh, with them uh, and around them. They're they're friends, neighbors, and families. I mean, you know, just think of the images of all the picnics and weddings that have been droned. Uh, to where, you know, they were targeting one guy, but they killed, like, you know, 50 people. You know, like, let's say that your next-door neighbor happens to be, uh, you know, a, a drug pusher, and you don't even know it. And just one day, his uh, his house gets droned. Uh, you think that's not going to affect you? Uh, you don't think that maybe the, their, uh, when his house explodes that maybe that will set your house on fire and then you'll have to run out and, and uh, you know, maybe uh, one of your – maybe the, uh, your kid has a window next to his house and uh, with the explosion uh, kills your child. You don't think that no, none of this stuff will, could, could ever come back to affect you once we bring the terror war home? And again, just to be clear, Trump is not talking about bringing the terror war to the United States yet, but it's um, – that's implied. He's only talking about Mexico right now, and he's talking about – think about it. This is our, our next-door neighbor he's thinking about sending in troops. Now, of course, the, the Mexican government uh, you know, put the, tried to put the kibosh on that, and they said, oh, that would be a violation of our sovereignty. You know, you're not allowed to do that. You can't just go around invading countries whenever you want without permission, um, and they can say that, but there's not much that they can really do about it. You know, the fact of the matter is, is that Mexico is within America's sphere of influence, and if Mexico tried to leave America's sphere of influence, there would be consequences. Uh, and so, you know, uh, America is uh, the superior power uh, in their relationship. Mexico does not have control. Uh, if uh, if uh, America says jump, Mexico needs to say how high. That's just the, the nature of the relationship between the two governments. And so, you know, when it comes to things like matters like this, national sovereignty doesn't matter much in practice. Uh, because the U.S. is going to do what they want. Uh, they're going to invade Mexico and, and start droning it if they want and sending in special operations forces and doing raids. I mean, you know, think about it. The, um, uh, the raid on Osama bin Laden's compound in Pakistan was not authorized by the Pakistani government, I believe, because, uh, you know, they were afraid that the Pakistani government would alert Osama bin Laden, which they probably would. Uh, because, uh, you know, Pakistan, uh, you know, even going back to 9-11 is always seen as being a little uh, quite close uh, to uh, bin Laden and his network. And so the Obama administration was like, yeah, we didn't tell Pakistan because we actually wanted to be able to catch him. So uh, we couldn't tell Pakistan. And so there is precedent for now uh, the U.S. going into Mexico and doing the same thing and just you know having all these raids and droning and without asking Mexico's permission because they're like, oh, well, Mexico's corrupt. If they'll probably alert the cartels that we're coming, and then they'll escape, and then we won't be able to drone them. And so overnight, uh, all of the horror of what's been going on in the Middle East since you know 2001, 2003 – uh, will be brought to North America, and it will, you know, it, it will take only an instant uh, for that to spread from Mexico over into the border of the U.S. Because uh, the the principles is established at that point. Once we start having bombs falling in North America on cartels, it won't matter what country they're in, whether they're in the United States or Mexico. You know, the the cartels, the the terror network uh, is, is is supposedly is operating everywhere. So we have to bomb everywhere. We have to send in the military everywhere. Uh, we have to do, you know, road checkpoints everywhere. You know, you have to, um, you know, have people patting down little kids looking for drugs in their pants uh, and feeling them up. And don't think for a minute that the American people will tolerate this. I don't think that that's the case. I think that this will only foster greater and greater division amongst Americans. Uh, sure, there will be some people that go along with this, but generally people will just learn to not respect their government. Uh, they will resent the military. Uh, you know, they will hate them to a large extent, just like Southerners hated the military after the Civil War. 
And of course, you'll probably see actual terrorist groups spring up to try and combat, uh, you know, if it gets bad enough, uh, the U.S. military's presence uh, in much of the country. Of course, they'll be, you know, they'll be labeled terrorists too, even though they're they're sort of acting in self-defense. And this will lead to more and more violence, and and will just help splinter the United States faster. Uh, because, like I've said so many times, the U.S. is in, um, uh, I think, a uh, unavoidable decline at this point. I think we've passed the point of no return. Um, you know, financially, uh, things are not looking good. Uh, of course, that's leaving aside the debt and all that. But I mean, I think we're screwed. That's what I'm getting at here, and this will hasten that. So maybe, maybe I should root for it and say, hey, this is part of ripping off the Band-Aid. But I mean, just you know, instinctually, I look at this and go, like, oh my gosh, this would be the the worst thing ever uh, to happen in America uh, would be uh, bringing the terror war home. So I may not be enough of an accelerationist uh, to really want to encourage that at this point. But the real hardcore accelerationists, I'm sure, love this proposal because uh, they look at that and say, oh my gosh, look at all this chaos that it would bring uh, to the homeland. It would completely uh, destabilize uh, our political order. I mean, the, 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 once, the, uh, once you turn your military on your own people, you either have to go full, hardcore, tyrannical, like East Germany style um, to where actually they had very low crime because uh, everyone was so afraid of doing anything. Uh, you have to have a total um, police state, which again, we're, we're heading that direction, but um, – uh, I, I don't think that uh, – I think that America is a little too big uh, to, and, and bulky uh, to be able to operate as efficiently as, say, East Germany did. And so you know, it's kind of like you know, the old saying, if you're going to come at the king, you better not miss. It's the same thing applies when you come at the people and you're trying to build a police state. Uh, police states are great for the government if they succeed, but, but when the police state is unable to hold itself together, is unable to uh, sufficiently suppress the people, well, then things turn bad. I mean th look at what happened to South Africa. Uh, South Africa was a police state um, until the fall of apartheid, um, and uh, you know, they had b banned books and stuff like that. It was very, you know, very restrictive, also very safe because that's how police states are. Um, and what happened after the fall of apartheid? Absolute chaos and um, and uh, a lot of people who wanted revenge. Uh, that's kind of that, – that might be our future. Of course, that's looking a little too far down the road, but I, you know, I, I'm, looking, I'm looking at what's going on right now, and you don't have to look too far over the horizon uh, to see the horrible consequences of what is being discussed right now and what the implications of that are, even though you know, even Trump himself is, is trying to be very vague. You know, when people are asking him in interviews about, oh, are you going to send troops into Mexico? He's like, I don't want to say what I will or will not do. It's like, well, you, know, <laughs> you, don't, you don't have that power. That just shows how much of an autocrat the the presidency uh, views itself, and I don't mean Trump in particular. I mean because Trump is acting no different than Obama did, um, you know. But uh, but uh, that's what happens when you start giving when Congress hands over all this executive power um, and uh, allows the executive to start wars and things like that without uh, proper consequences. I mean, if if you really want to impeach Trump for something, don't impeach him uh, for. Uh, for all this nonsensical crap about you know Ukraine in a phone call, uh, impeach him for uh, you know threatening to to uh, send troops into Mexico, uh, which uh, you know he has no congressional authorization for. But I don't I don't want to get off on a tangent about the the impeachment nonsense. So anyway, if you get anything of value out of this video, I'd appreciate you clicking that like button and sharing this video. And if you haven't already, please do subscribe because I do upload every day and I'd hate to have you miss one. So I'll see you folks back here tomorrow.